Good morning. This is Dr. Bill White again with the American Orthodontic Society. And I want to talk to you this morning some about the temporal mandibular joint and helping to understand it. It's a complicated joint and a lot of uh, people doing orthodontics just tend to uh, ignore it. But uh, uh, that is the wrong way to approach it. So I uh, hope that I can convince you that it's not that difficult to uh, understand this and what uh, it does. And it is a tough thing uh, that lasts for years. So I'm going to show some pictures here that uh, these gentlemen uh, cut down the joint. And uh, you can look at this uh, video if you want to. Uh, from the university there in Sweden, and uh, they did a wonderful thing to help us understand the temporal mandibular joint themselves. And so I want to thank them for doing that. Now, this is a picture of a cut down uh, joint. Now, this is the fossa right here. It's, it's, if you can visualize this, and this is the condyle right here and this is the disc between the two and I always thought that the condyle went right up into the top but it doesn't it has a space up in here and this has to be the tissue where the retrodiscal the well they call it the retro retrodiscal tissue and it's very vascular, and this is where the tip, the synovial fluid is formed. Uh, this synovial fluid, uh, some way or another, gets from this tissue over to the upper joint space, which is here, and the lower joint space is here. And this is when the mouth is closed together, and this condyle presses in this direction and the tissue in here we call the disc is extremely tough tissue and takes a tremendous amount of force in this area right here and this tissue can last for years i'm, I'm 92 and going on 93 and i still open and close and i can put my finger right up there and feel this condyle go down this way and come back up. And the tissue in between here is still working good. And it just, well, I can have been damaged. I got hit snow skiing one time and knocked the fool out of, of me and it damaged this to some extent. And every once in a while it would get to hurting and it'd be so sore I couldn't touch this area, but it would heal up and I rest it for a few days or you can put heat on it and put the ice on it and you can uh, take something to get rid of the inflammation and it'll go down and go away. But I've been using this joint ever since I, even before I was born, see, it's been in there. And we can't make anything to put in here that's as tough as this. We tried doing that, and it uh, broke down, and it the, caused these giant cells to get into the brain and killed uh, several people because of it. And uh, we can't put anything in there to restore it. So I'm going to erase this. And... Uh, I'm going to kind of move the jaw a little bit here just to show you this this condyle knife is going to go and this is the thing it has a teeth on it out here on this side I hope I uh, don't confuse you on this and I've been over this several times with you but now this jaw will just move a little bit and I'll show you you can look at this video here is the disc now right in here. It has attachments down here and also attachments up above. And it's got a muscle down in this part 
It's a complicated joint. It's the most complicated joint in the body, and it can be damaged very easily. If somebody gets hit in the jaw and they don't have a mouthpiece in, it drives this part of the condyle into this retrodiscal tissue, which is highly vascular, and this absolutely, this portion right in here has no blood vessels and no nerves in it at all. There's no feeling in here. It doesn't get fed by the blood stream because the uh, arteries and veins can't stand that much pressure that they put on it. If you look at this as a machine or a, an engineer would look at it, you're going to bite the teeth out together here. If we open our jaw and move forward here and bite, nothing is touching from here around. And whatever pressure I put on these front teeth, there's more pressure on the joints than there is on the front teeth. The muscles are closer to here than they are to the teeth, which way up here I can't show you where the teeth are, I'm sorry, got that out. So if I bite with say 10 or 15 pounds of force out here, I might have 30 or 35 or 40 pounds of force on the two joints, you see. And this stuff has to take a tremendous beating and I've chewed everything under the sun in my lifetime and didn't even realize that I'd be put cracking pecans with my teeth and doing different things and biting things off with your teeth. And I want to put this in. A lot of our children, or a lot of us, have deep bites now that if we let the kids alone, I mean, and you give them a chicken a piece to eat, they gnaw it or gnaw the bone and eat it. And they'd get a lot of force on their front teeth, and their front teeth wouldn't grow down so far over. I can imagine that uh, Eskimo women that chew the hides, you know, to tan them and get them out of their teeth must just be worn out. And they don't have any deep bite problems. But we're not going to get everybody to do that, so we have to take care of it after it's uh, maybe we damage it some by letting it get too far and then they want to go forward and it's too far back here and people will have pain with that and that's what we have to take care of. So I'm going to race this again and we'll increase this distance and watch this disc. This is the double concave disc now and it's going to move forward on, on the on the fossil up there, the, and the condyle, and that keeps the distance between there, and this synovial fluid that is formed back here feeds this tissue, and it is the slickest thing we know to man. We can't make a, a, anything as slick as that is. And it is, it, it, it squeezes into this tissue when we just close, close. The fluid that is in the lower joint space and the upper joint space, or this synovial fluid, is pushed into this tissue. And that's what brings a food structure to this tissue. And it also picks up the waste products and carries it back to the retrodiscal tissue, and this highly vascular area cleans it or puts it in the bloodstream, and it's clean somewhere in the body. It's so complicated, you can uh, have a book written about it, but we don't have to understand everything in it to know how to work with it. So now as the condyle moves further down this way, this disc it's double concave, and the muscles and the tissue behind it go with it, and it will come out. Let me go one more step here, and here, well, that's a big step, 
the disk is now out here and this is the fossil and the, and the ears back in this area and it's the as this closes to now the condyle doesn't go all the way up here like I've seen it drawn but it stops somewhere in here and this tissue is wadded up in that let's let's back up and look at how it is see the condyle is here now and here's the fossa and here is the disc it's in this area and it's double concave and then this is the area where the synovial fluid has to be formed and how it gets from this place into the tissue here with the food structure and the uh, oxygen and everything has to take care of this tissue is a almost <laughs> like a miracle I don't really understand how it could have developed uh, that complicated but that's the way it is and this tissue has to take so much force that no blood vessels or nerves can stand the pressure so the tissue is formed and it has to be fed and taken care of and I've to go over things more than once I know now I have worked with uh, surgeons where they went in and we operated on the jaw and then we wired the jaw together down here so it couldn't move so it would go back and if this condyle was jammed up against the fossa during this uh, period of time that we kept the jaw wired together you would unwire it and this tissue right here that is so tough I've talked to old surgeons that have gone in and seen it it was like cheese they could scrape it off in other words it starved to death while you were in getting the jaw to grow together down here I've never uh, I've never trained to to do to correct the broken jaws but it was in Africa and there was nobody else to do it and I had something in the hospital sent me a guy with a broken jaw and I put this uh, steel deal on his teeth to hold them in place and then pulled it together and wired it to and it grew back and the guy lived and <laughs> I was amazed I had never even thought of fixing a broken jaw and but I'm sure that I tied that thing together so tight that the disc probably was damaged severely so those people may wear that disc or the disc will just dis disintegrate in the per part around the edge of it will continue to live but there'll be a hole in this disc and so now the condyle and the fossa rub against each other we have this bony structure rubs together when the hole in the disc and it changes the height of it and uh, nowadays they put little plates when they cut that they screw plates in and they don't tighten it up just like they used to to let the upper and lower jaw grow back together and they leave a little play in there where they that the synovial fluid can feed this disc and keep it alive during this period of time uh, and that is a big help so let's go ahead and show again now this will open up and uh, the condyle uh, moves out like this and the disc follows it out and this looks like it's deteriorated on the front but remember somebody has cut this down this is a, a somebody donated their body thank goodness and they were able to cut this down and open and close it and show you the picture of it and that was a, a big help to understanding what was going on in there now let me go to the 
uh, fourth picture. It's coming across there. This ligament holds that on there from here, and it's got to stretch this one out in there. Now, when this disc gets way out, you get the disc in front of it, it pops in front of it if you get a, a blow on it hard enough. Now, let's move it to another, uh, out a little further. And there's about as far as the condyle is out here. Here is the disc, and it's in this area. So you open your mouth wide and bite on something. Well, this disc is in between here. And as you bite with your mouth open like that, there's a tremendous amount of pressure put on this area. And this can't have blood vessels and it can't have uh, nerves in it, but this part around here does. And I've seen places where there's a hole right in here and you have a rim of uh, tissue around there, but these two bones would be working together right in here. Now, let's go to another one, I think, number, okay, number six, it starts going, going back. And so there's the disc and the condom going back together and it comes back to this point, number, that's number eight. And the disc, kind of the portion wads up and squeezes up into this place. And the condyle does not go all the way to the bottom of the fossil. In other words, this is the end of it. And it gets back here. And now this is that disc. Here is the disc right in here. And this is the retrodiscal tissue. <coughs> Excuse me. That you do not want to put too much pressure on it. It must get up against it a little bit to get to transfer this fluid from the retrodiscal tissue so that your retrodiscal tissue, the synovial fluid, gets in here and feeds this disc in this part of the mouth and carries out the waste product. And how it does all that, I, I don't really know, but I understand that that's where this gets pressure. When you put pressure on this and you damage this, you can move the condyle out by putting a splint in somebody's mouth and have the condyle out here somewhere. And this pain, it will go away almost immediately if you do that. So we'll show that on cases after, if you understand this part of it, it do that. And this is a, <clears throat> I'm gonna show a, a disc that's popped out in front. I think this is the condyle, this is the disc right here. And this is a anterior disc. Uh, the disc is moving out in front of the condyle. And that's where it normally goes. You get hit, let's watch this disc. And it comes down and now the disc is pushed in front. So somebody pushes their jaw back real hard, it squeezes the disc back and stretches this ligament, and the disc now is in front of the condyle. Uh, <clears throat> now, as they continue to open, this disc will kind of wad up in front, and you see the condyle here, and this is part of the fossa up here. And of course, now you've got to remember this has been cut the front of this is cut off. Uh, this part in here is, they had to trim that so you could see this and then took pictures of it with a high speed camera. And uh, I appreciate what these men did. Now you see it go out here and then you see it as a pop back in place. Or now it's out in front, I'm not sure but but now we're going to close back. Now the disc just pops back in place. That's where it's out in front. Somebody opens their mouth 
and it stretches that and then it and then it pops back upon there and you open you see the oh the jaw sometimes it'll hang and it'll go to one side and you and then it slide back over and it'll go ahead and bite something then when they close it'll slip off. You can see that the jaw will have just a little bump. You won't hear it much. But some people click real loud. You can have a thing you put on there, you can listen to it, and uh, you'll see it come back in place right here. Now, this is one I think that's worn out and with jaw is going in a different direction, so it's a little confusing to you. But they're going, this jaw is going to open out. Now, this disc has been damaged and it's got the sides back here that had blood vessels and nerves in it but this part right here is gone it may have been from something tying the jaw together for a long period of time and then it just kind of dies and then it wears out it, it's nothing there but i've had old surgeons say it'd be like cheese <clears throat> this is a tough tough material that it's made out of, but when you start it, you don't feel it or know it until it's gone, you see. Now they'll, <coughs> we'll go on and open this up in a minute and you'll see this opening in that, oh, they took this person and dropped their jaw down and here is the disc that would go around like this. But this part that takes all the pressure, it is gone. Now that uh, that will rub, let the two bones <coughs> here come together, and uh, they'll make a noise. You can make a little. Uh, you can hear it if you listen real close to that. But normally, the people can uh, get by with that without the pain. Now there it is put back together again and this is anterior disc displacement. Now the disc is out in front and you have to kind of, if you watch this video you can see it and understand it better. Uh, this is a one that is literally worn out. Let me go back here. <clears throat> I'm stopped up this morning so I can't talk too good. But I had a lady one time that had the, her disc was popping and it hurt. It bothered her some. But she just kept on. I told her to come get a, a splint and put in and we could uh, probably help her and get the disc back in place if possible. But she didn't do anything. So I saw her about 10 years later, and she said, my disc, uh, it stopped popping over there, and it stopped hurting. And now I can open and close and eat. It doesn't hurt. But I knew what happened, and I'll have to show you. You see how this, this is the head of the condom. The, the disc is gone. This is part of it here, and this is part of it over here. And so the head of the condom, if it's round to start with, and it starts, if you get a hole in it, it will gradually beak out, kind of like a, a, they call it just beaking out. And now it slips back and forth like this, and it doesn't hurt the person much, or they have it, but you'll hear that racket as it slips back and forth like that. So here this is worn into it, got a hole in it. And there's another view. Now I'm going to stop here. I think we've covered enough that you can see this is where the retrodiscal tissue is back in this area. Here is the disc and it has an upper, an upper joint space and a lower joint space and this portion right here that takes the pressure, has no nerves, no blood vessels. It has to be fed by the t tissue, the, the slick 
synovial fluid, it gets in here, is loaded with food stuff, and it takes oxygen, it takes the, the waste products out, purifies it some way, and gets it into the bloodstream, and then comes back with clean fluid that's uh, got the nutrients in it and keeps us alive. And I'm near on the way to 93, and mine is still alive. And uh, it is amazing that how this can last that long. So I'm going to hang up and uh, say goodbye for the day. And I hope this informs you something about the joint. You need to understand it, and you can you can help people so much with this. And we'll talk about that later. Thank you for watching. Hope you'll join our group and subscribe to this. And we'll try to keep uh, informing you. People doing any kind of dental work need to understand this joint. And it's not that hard to understand. And it, you can see it. And once you understand it and know what to do it, it'll help your work in any part of it. So thank you for looking, and I'll hang up here and uh, close this thing out. So let me see if I can get this uh, deal across. And thank you again.